Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, and we have a treat for you today. We've been given full access to the Gilmore Antique Car Museum. Now, what is the Gilmore Museum? It is located in Hickory Corners, Michigan, on a campus with 90 acres and houses over 400 cars and motorcycles that are completely unbelievable. And you can even see some of these cars run and drive. What we're going to do today is give you a broad overview of what the museum has to offer and show you some of my favorites along the way. So let's get started. All right, so we're in the main gallery right now. This is what you see immediately when you walk into the building after you get your ticket. And this main gallery changes every single year. So if you've been here like a few years ago, it's gonna look entirely different now. What we have right now is the Packard collection uh, on display here. So this is a number of different Packards from some of the oldest to some of the most rare and even some of the last that were produced. And we're gonna show you some of our favorites around here, but it is just incredible to see all these Packards in one place. All right, so we're here right when you walk in. This is probably the oldest Packard that you're ever going to see. And it's right here in person and you can be right up close to it and see every little detail. Now, what's really neat about this car, it's a 1901 runabout. And this car for me, I find some of the interesting facts of uh, these early cars that have some features that you may find in modern day cars and where these, this all started. So on this car, it has the H pattern shift pattern on it, which is a common thing you see nowadays. And it was also the first car to have an actual steering wheel instead of a tiller, which is just really awesome. Another neat thing about this car that I find really interesting is it has leather fenders. When did you ever see that? Leather fenders, so really cool. It's a very early car, and this is just three years into Packard's production. And uh, it's definitely one of my favorites in this room. All right, so my last one, and it is a banger, is the 1916 Twin Six Racer. Now this uses a V12 engine. It was built strictly for racing, obviously, as you see. It had a driver and a ride-along mechanic that actually sat and pumped the oil and also the fuel pump while they were driving. It had one single handle that he held onto as they went around the track and raced over bumpy, bumpy roads and crazy terrain. It was just insane. Now, what's really crazy about this car is that it was shipped over to South America. It raced successfully for a number of years, and then it was put away in a shed or a barn for 70 years. And then it was found in Paraguay, pulled out, and obviously been restored, and is now on display. And you can walk up to one of the most rare Packards that ever existed, and is right here in front of us. All right, so now we're in the 20s and 30s gallery, and if you are a fan of Art Deco design, this is where it's at. It has a smattering of amazing Art Deco vehicles. There's Duesenbergs, there's Rolls-Royce, there's 
Packards, there's Buicks, there's LaSalle's, everything in between is in here and you will just be overwhelmed with the beautiful design. And also you can look at some of the most rare and most valuable cars you will ever see in your life up close and personal. So let me show you a couple of my favorites. Our first stop in the 20s and 30s room is just going to have to be the two Duesenbergs right in front and center. These cars are amazing and back in 1920s and 1930s these cost over $20,000 new. That was equal to two mid-sized homes and a pile of Model A Fords. So obviously these cars today are even more rare than back then and you get to see them up close and personal. So the two cars that we have here is a convertible Victoria and a dual Cal Phaeton that has original ownership back to Buster Keaton's family. Super cool and really awesome to see in person. All right, so this room is the 50s and 60s room, and there's a nice variety of cars. I wanna show you some of my favorites. There's some, some extremely rare stuff in here, and there's a couple little things that just make my heart beat a little bit faster. So let's take a walk around and show you what we got. So we have some pretty common stuff here. Common for the 50s, Nash Metropolitan, a 50s Chevy, and then of course we have some 50s, uh, a 50s Ford, Studebaker, and the first thing we're gonna come up on here is the 26th Corvette ever produced, 1953. We have it here. And this car is just in great shape. It's really neat to see. And uh, it looks a little bit better than, than the early Corvette that we pulled out of the Schroll estate. So kind of, uh, kind of neat to see one that's all, that was all redone and, and sitting right here in front of us. So behind Mike over here, we have the 63 Chrysler turbine car. Now, I'm not exactly sure how many of these survived, but I think there were, after a number of them were destroyed, there was only 11, about 11 that were left. This is one of them. And it is just crazy to see one of these up close and all the crazy design features. This is one of my favorite eras uh, for prototype cars that uh, the big, big manufacturer are doing. Like, just look at the back, back end on this thing. It's really crazy. And obviously, powered by a turbine engine. Now, these turbine engines ran off pretty much any flammable liquid so it would run off tequila, it would run off of diesel fuel, even some perfumes. And it's kind of crazy to think, but this car is right here in front of us. So it's really cool we we're able to see this in person here in the Gilmore. Then there's some temporary displays that go on in this, in this building right now. Kind of cool for us, obviously, this is relevant to our interests, is the American Graffiti display. So we have a, a rep, replica of the Milner car here. Then we have the actual 58 Chevy Impala from the movie. This is the one right here that you can get right up next to and see. And then obviously we have a similar T-Bird that was from the movie. So this is just a rotating display that is here for a little bit of time and is uh, really cool, mainly the Impala. I mean, to walk up to that, a movie car that's so famous, super cool. So near and dear to my heart, I'm getting excited. Two real deal old hot rods. We have the Woody, Woody Lee Model T Roadster. So this car is like, you guys have seen the free tea that we've done. And these were the cars that I was looking at when I was starting to build the free tea. And we can see this car up and close as it raced. It is just 
an amazing piece of hot rod history that we have here in front of us. And I can't say it enough, but to see these types of cars in person, it, no photo or old magazine does it justice to see the stuff up in person. So next, the chicken coop. 34.4 chicken coop, hard, hard chopped, very famous old race car hot rod. And look, oh, amazing. So this stuff is just incredible to be able to see these. These are on temporary loan and uh, you can get right up next to them and see every single custom little detail, which is just so cool. I've already been coming back to this car over and over and over again to look at it because you guys know I'm kind of doing a 33 Ford right now. So really cool 50, 60s room changes around, but some of these cars that are on, on display quite often are definitely worth the trip to come and check out. We right now are in American muscle car heaven. This is pretty much the best muscle cars you're going to see all in one room in the Gilmore Museum. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick loop around just so you can see some of the stuff. I'm gonna take you to my favorite muscle car, which is obviously a Ford product that's over on the other side. So take a walk around. So. This might just look like another Mustang, but this is actually a prototype car that was built and was actually eventually sent to a correct correctional facility where it was actually used for a training program, if you will, where they were restoring and working on a car. And then eventually was found in a junkyard. This car, prototype, GT500 in the junkyard. So somebody found this car, it was eventually restored and is now here one of one prototype, here it is. This alone, this room, if you are into muscle cars, you need to come here and just having all these different displays and the stories to read about these cars is incredible. And no matter how, time, how many times you go, you're gonna read different ones and see new stories. So it's just really incredible. And I could spend a whole day just in this room educating myself on the best muscle cars in the world. So now we're in one of my favorite buildings in the museum. This is some of the stuff that really just blows my mind. And that is the Lincoln portion of the exhibit. 
Now on the outside of this part of the museum, when you walk in, it actually looks like an original Lincoln dealership. It even has some of the original Lincoln factory stonework that's right here that you can touch that was up on the Lincoln buildings back in the day. Now in here, are some of my favorite cars are right behind me and we're gonna walk and kind of look at those. As far as the hot rods and customs go, these cars have some of the best styling of Ford products that were ever made in my opinion. And we get to see them right here in all the different forms. So we have this amazing convertible sedan that the windshield, like some of the stuff that I really like on these cars when I'm building wind, customs and hot rods is like looking at the windshield and how it's laid back just a little bit on this car and the way that they set up the doors and the B pillars and everything in here. And uh, obviously the dash work and all that stuff is just really incredible in this. Um, the styling cues that you can take when doing a custom, you can take right from what Lincoln was doing back back in the day on the car. So here, if you are a custom guy, this is like, this is it. This is the pinnacle of Ford products for custom. And that is a 37 Zephyr. And it's a three window. So I'm like, oh my God. So three window Zephyr is it. There's so many details on these cars that just blow my mind when you look at them. One that I just noticed today that I haven't been in this close to that many 37 Zephyrs that were completely stocked to know that this was a factory thing. But if you look, just the seat frames around the top, like little details like that, that you can walk right up to these cars in the museum and you can see them and look at them and, and kind of just take in how beautiful these cars were. So this one is probably, even though there's a lot of much more rare cars in this, this exhibit, this is it. I mean, it's black, it's a three window, it's a Zephyr. It's just, it's just perfect. So, so, so good. But we have other options of the, the Zephyrs, the, the Zephyr um, convertibles and Continental convertibles um, that are in here. This is much like in a video you guys saw, I went to an auction recently in Illinois and there was a 40 Zephyr and there was a Zephyr that was, I think the buy of the auction, that was a 40 Zephyr Continental Cabriolet just like this that was in pieces. And I think it sold for something like $7,000. And this is what someone could have had with just a little bit of work. Beautiful car. It's just awesome to see these cars in person and see how massive they were compared to the Ford, the Ford models of that same time, They're huge. So it's really cool to see all those. So this building that we're in is probably just as exciting to look at on the outside as it is when you actually get inside and see the cars. So the front of the building and the building itself is actually based off of a 1948 GM design dealership rendering and then also off of a actual 1949 Cadillac dealership. So it has the uh, logo on the top, it has the rounded glass and everything that is like late 40s, 1950s, like mid-century modern, that is what you're gonna see in here, as well as all the great Cadillac LaSalle's and everything that goes with it. So we're gonna give you a little walk around of some of our favorites in this building. One of the really interesting things among all of the buildings at the Gilmore Museum campus is that you're gonna see some really incredible one-off artifacts and the Cadillac building is no different. So here what you're looking at is the original crest from the Clark Avenue Cadillac building that was put up there in around 1919, 1920. You can actually see it up here 
in this nice little blown up photo up above that was actually on that building until the 1990s when it was taken off of the building. And now it's right here up close and personal in the museum, which is really cool. And it's just so neat to see how this was constructed and to think that this thing sat way up on that building for almost a hundred years. So I obviously gravitate towards the back of the Cadillac Museum. There's this awesome huge Cadillac dealership sign in the back that lights up. And this is where the really cool 50s Cadillacs live. And I like to go back here and look around because I think these cars were some of the best styled and best option cars of the 50s. This one right here is definitely my favorite, this convertible Brits. If I was able to own a killer 50s Cadillac, it would be one of these cars because to me, they're basically like factory customized cars. And this one, this is the bee's knees. All right, so one of the last things that's really, really neat here on the campus is they have a little piece of the East Coast here at the Gilmore Museum. This is a 1941 New Jersey-based original old school diner is on the grounds and you can actually, it's fully functioning. You can go in and have lunch, have a milkshake, do whatever, and it's a great meeting place. So of course, we're gonna have some lunch in here and, uh, and hang out for a little bit and uh, talk cars. It's gonna be really fun. All right, so we spent two days here filming and getting our overview of the Gilmore Museum, and it's been incredible. Now, I can't stress enough, this is the nation's largest antique automobile museum, and two days is barely enough for, uh, for us to check everything out. So if you're coming for your first time, definitely plan a full day or more to visit the museum, and it is worth it. It will not disappoint. I can promise you that. Now, we want to thank the Gilmore Museum for allowing us to come in, do all the behind-the-scenes shots and everything that you saw in this video, and I want you to support the museum, so definitely subscribe to them on all forms of social media, especially their YouTube page. They are going to be doing some more content on their YouTube page that's going to give you some interactive content that even though you may not be close, you can still see everything that's going on with the museum. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Catch you next time.